Um, thanks, hi everybody. Uh, I did this piece with my business partner, Scott Reed, uh, who's back in Toronto doing our business while I'm here having cocktails. He asked me to send along the message, I hate Scott's question. Um, unlike some of the other presenters, I have no clips or visual aids or charisma. So, <laughs> if you could hum, don't stop believing, it might add to the narrow, narrative force of my pitch. <laughs> Frankie Fast is a one camera sitcom, but a low level mobster named Frank Zioli, who struggles to balance family with family, and who is reminded each and every day that just because you're made doesn't mean you've got it made. You know the uh, cork board that the cops have with the photos of the mobsters on it, you know the boss at the top, the captain's below, Frankie's hanging on right at the bottom, a push pin away from oblivion. Um, the feds don't even know his uh, nickname, they call him Fat Frankie. Uh, we think of it as the Sopranos by way of the office. Uh, a look at the lowest rung of the organized crime ladder, uh, guys who are kind of just a cubicle away from being your typical office drone, Longing in vain for advancement, uh, marveling at the incompetence of the superiors, and getting angry at their wives when they wash their pants without removing the protection money. Um, the Sopranos, it shows you the fancy yacht, the uh, stash of cash. Uh, only Frankie Fats will show you the guys who have to watch, uh, walk the labradoodle of their captain's gumab, or um, explain how mobsters work out their vacation schedules so there's someone around to bust heads in August. <laughs> there are actually one other similarity to, to The Sopranos. At the end of every episode, the screen goes black and I call David Chase an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Our show takes a kind of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern approach to the mob life. We hardly ever see the boss, if at all. He's too far removed from Frankie's level. Our focus is on Frankie's crew and his family at home. Um, the boss is constantly talked about, of course, and he shows up at a very special episode toward the end of the first season where he and Blossom learn a valuable lesson about growing up. <laughs> um, the crew is led by a captain, Mario DeLillo, who doesn't have Al Capone or Sonny Corleone as his inspiration, but Donald Trump. Uh, he lives by Donald's advice, he reads the trendy business books, he may be the first mobster to refer to uh, breaking a guy's kneecaps as shifting his paradigm. <laughs> In one episode, he takes his crew on a corporate retreat with a motivational speaker. Uh, the uh, crew is rounded out by Dino, a cocky and ambitious new recruit who figures this low-level stuff is just a quick stop on his way up the ladder to riches and obesity. Uh, the boss's nephew, Piero, who's a second-rate ass kisser and a first-rate moron, and a 50-year-old lifer named John, who long ago gave up hopes of rising in the family and sits around mostly whining and discontent, but every once in a while proves, shows the old way of uh, running the mafia and intimidating people. Uh, one of the, uh, oh, and there's also uh, the hangout at a coffee shop. The woman who runs the shop is uh, a really hot babe named Antonia. Uh, the great thing is that she's a really hot babe. The bad thing is that she's the boss's daughter. So that could be awkward. One of the primary conflicts in Frankie's life uh, is with society itself. I mean, Frankie isn't rich. Uh, he works for an organization that does not give tea four slips. He has a mortgage to negotiate, he's got forms to fill out, and then he's got to come up with some sort of job. Uh, he's under pressure from the school to help out with the craft fair and the carpool. And yes, he's a mobster, but in some ways he's like us in a size 54 black jacket. He, he's the competent guy at work that never gets noticed. He's the voice of reason in a sea of aqua velva and retardation. Uh, he's the overwhelmed parent, the hectored spouse, the too loyal friend. He constantly thinks of self-improvement, eating better, getting physically fit, reading the classics. Uh, he ends up elbow deep in a bag of chips. Uh, Frankie's troubles don't end when he gets home. His wife, Gloria, is an obsessed career woman. She doesn't have a job. She's obsessed with his career. Um, she thought she'd marry into the good life, that she'd be getting Botox with all the captain's wives. Uh, but she, Frankie hasn't worked his way that up the ladder that far. And when he does knock over a shoe truck, he brings her home Converse high tops instead of product. Uh Frankie also has two young kids. One day he tells them about the concept of omerta, silence. And not to school them in mafia lore, but just so maybe he can get five minutes to watch Sports Center in peace. Uh, we see season one of the show following the arrival in the crew of Dino. 
Con the cock eater guy? Yes. That's time, buddy. Holy Sorry. crap! <laughs> <laughs> Now, just so you understand, because there are people here from the UK and from Europe, a T4 slip is what happens after you work for a year and your employer gives you a blah, 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 you fill in the rest of the blanks. That's your tax form. Okay, so we have questions for Scott. Who wants to start? Brent. I'll start. Um, can you just go quick, obviously, not quickly, but can you uh, talk a bit about the tone of the show? Because, you know, like, usually you get this sort of these monster shows that are, that are very gritty and, and you know, we kind of... You know, are you going to play on that, or is it going to be a, you know, a, a broader kind of tone? It's not just being broad. I mean, not Reno 911 broad, uh, but somewhere, probably somewhere closer to Kirby and Pat enthusiasm and tone. I mean, these guys are, in my mind, real monsters, and they do do bad things every once in a while, but mostly it's, uh, it's a show about domestic life. Uh, you know, what, what this guy's like at home, what this guy's like at his so-called office, sitting around with all these guys and his crew. And it's just different that he's got a job that if he quits, they kill him. So he's got less options than the rest of us. 